Good morning, everyone. It is an indeed uh, immense pleasure to all of us that you are here with us offline and also those who are attending online. As you must be knowing that the center is observing Swachata Pakwara throughout the first fortnight of this month of May 2022. And as a part of this program, uh, we have uh, arranged a motivational talk on solid and liquid waste management uh, today. Uh, uh, let me move on to this. Uh, first, I would like to request our Honorable Director Ma'am, Professor Thomas T. Shahadash Gupta, to please come on the stage and welcome you all on behalf of the center. Ma'am, please. Very much. Uh, as has been already announced, so today's program is a part of this Sachuta Pakwara program, which is a part of, as you all know, that there is a nationwide mission on cleanliness, which started in 2014 in the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi, 2nd October. And this is a nationwide drive for business and such part of A clean society, I think, is a mark of how advanced the society is. It is also related to the economic growth, the intellectual growth, the growth of the humankind that is related to clean. And uh, just to give you an example, if you have a clean environment, you actually hesitate to throw some garbage. But if it is already dirty, you don't mind, you know, throwing some garbage. And that I have seen many times because I have spent quite a significant amount of my life in Europe, and especially in Germany, which is known for their cleanliness. You know, in I was in Stuttgart, and the roads were so clean. It used to be said that it is so clean, you can even lick the road, the pavement. If you can't remember where your house is, the best way is to lick the pavement. So that just tells you how clean it is. And the same Indian in India, when they don't mind throwing something out of their window, they don't do that when they are in jail. So that just tells us we have to change our environment first and if we change our surrounding environment then this cleanliness will be automatically you know come out of the people who are in this environment of course this is a chicken and egg problem because the person who is throwing garbage is not part is creating this environment and the environment has an influence on it so it is not an easy problem but we are very glad that the nation has taken this mission and this cleanliness mission has all the institutes have been made a party to it and it is not only cleanliness within the institute but also the surrounding that's where the space is and i'm indeed very happy that today this uh, motivational talk will be given by this Bhima Banerjee uh, who is the director this uh, program director of this East and Biomedical West, and she will elaborate more on the program that the drive is taken. And I do hope that will motivate us further. Our campus, I feel, is quite clean as you have seen, and we have taken special care about the cleanliness campus. But this message should be kind of sent all across in your neighborhood where you stay, in the neighborhood of your center, not only your working place, but also the place where you stay, building the habits of your kids, how to maintain cleanliness, all these are a way of living. So with that, I welcome once again all of you and special welcome to the speaker.
Thank you very much, ma'am, for your inspiring message. And now I would like to request Mr. Mithilesh K. Pandey, uh, our campus engineer from Estate Officer, to please come on the stage and for the introduction of the speaker. Morning, everyone. This opportunity to introduce Ms. Rima Banerjee. She is currently Program Director, East India and Biomedical Waste Management for Center, in Center for Center for Environment Education, CE East Calcutta. Today, <coughs> Ms. Banerjee is currently headed the Eastern Region of Center for Environment Education, a non-profit organization established in 1984 as a Center for Excellence in Environmental Education by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India. With a background in microbiology, Ms. Banerjee has over two decades of experience in strategy, planning, and management of projects of waste management, circular economy, and environmental health across various cities across India and Asia Pacific. She is trained as a global leader on, on the circular economy and is, for, is also providing training at, to various urban local bodies, officials of various districts of West Bengal as a key IEC agency appointed by the State Urban Development Agency, Government of West Bengal. Uh, today's talk, in her talk, she, today she will cover the current regulatory framework of solid waste management and significant aspect of integrated waste management with selected case studies from the countries. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, now it is the time for our motivational talk to be delivered by ma'am Ms. Rima Banerjee. So good morning and uh, good morning ma'am and uh, it's very you know I'm glad to be uh, at this premise uh, Swachita Pakhwada fortnight celebrations that we have across the country. Uh, as ma'am clearly said you know I mean I would be definitely talking about waste management but I would like to give you a virtual tour what actually is waste management. Amra, uh, I mean we all know a bit about waste management, but as a practitioner, you know, we are not only working people or a professor or a student, but we are also a generator of waste. So how do we really understand what exactly happens to the waste that we are generating? What is the way which is, what is going on? You know, what is the trend in waste management uh, across the country? And uh, I think this is the exact time uh, to know about it so that over a period of time when we are really talking about waste management, we understand that what happens and uh, where we are uh, to intervene in that. See, even with a lot of developments and uh, we cannot be healthy in a sick planet that we have to understand. Nobody can be healthy. I mean, you know, I mean, if I have my premise clean, but the entire environment is dirty, I cannot be healthy. And if I'm not healthy, I cannot be productive, I cannot go into studies, research, and all these things. So to start it up, uh, just to introduce my organization, I am based in Kolkata. I have more than two decades of experience in waste management, circular economy, and environment health. With my parent organization, Center for Environment Education, many of them, I mean, who are into the environment field, sustainability field, know this organization very well. We have almost more than 35 years of experience in country as well as in Asia Pacific region. Our primary objective or the mandate is to create an awareness and education on various aspects of sustainable development. Saying so, we are not only awareness creating body, we are also into the implementation phase. We help in planning, we help in strategy planning, we help in implementation of various 
economic and sustainable mode of uh, programs. We have almost in all the states we have office, we do have uh, two international offices as well. These are some of the trust area that I'm talking about. We start from basically the formative years, that is schools, students and all uh, to give a lot of, uh, you know, kind of intervention that they can do on waste management or sustainability or environment education. We go to youth, we are involved with a lot of colleges and institutes to make the students, you know, understand about the new system of entrepreneurship that they can have in environmental field so that they could take it up. And uh, communicating environment through media and these are all, you know, we have almost 20 trust area and the waste management is one of the major trust area that I'm heading and I'm looking on. Now to start with, just understand these questions. You know, when we have come uh, to any kind of uh, talk or uh, session on waste management, we have to ask ourselves, are we aware of these things? Are we really aware that how much quantum of solid waste is generated in your ULB, if you say, you know, urban local body, municipal area? So in your municipal area, are you really aware of how much quantity of waste generated? I think 80% may not be knowing. How much is the waste generated in the your ULB? What is the characteristic of solid waste? Are you aware that how much, what is the quality of the waste being generated? Is it a garden waste? It is a dry waste? It is a wet waste? So are you really aware of your own uh, surroundings about this? Now, there are some actions being taken by municipality. There are some actions which are not taken by municipality. As ma'am said, it's a chicken and egg relationship. I blame municipality, municipality blames me that I'm not segregating waste. So I again, you know, so this blame game will keep going on unless we all take action at our own end, then we won't be able to, you know, we will be able to have very clean cities. Okay. Just to give again to start up with, you know, what actually the regulatory framework scenario or landscape in India works. So we have here the constitution of India, which frames rules. So we have rule on solid waste. We have rules on most of the waste, but I'm here to talk about solid waste management rules. Solid waste management rules has been promulgated in 2016, but it doesn't mean that there was no rule before that. There has been rule, the first rule started from 2010, but later on there has been amendment, there has been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, success, failures that we saw and the rules have been kept on changing. So now the latest rule that we are talking about is uh, the rule which is promulgated in 2016. Now we have something called regulatory bodies. Now the rule has to be enforced. You know, I have made a rule, I want your institute to enforce the rule. So there has to be some regulatory body who will penalize, who will monitor, who will evaluate. So in the regulatory body of that rule, we have three bodies, which are Ministry of Environment and Forest Climate Change at a you know, at the uh, country level, we have CPCD, Central Pollution Control Board. We have Ministry of Housing Affairs. So these are at the country level. Then we come back to the state. We have again State Urban Dev Environment Department. We also have West Bengal State Urban uh, Environment Department, which is very nearby to your premise. We have SPCB, which is also very nearby to your premise, West Bengal State Pollution Control Board. These are the state-based regulatory bodies who are the people who will enforce the law? Then we have implementing bodies like SUDA, State Urban Development Agency. Their office is also very nearby of your premise. So SUDA is the implementing agency in the state where Kolkata Municipal Corporation also comes. But uh, under SUDA, the, at all the municipalities of the state comes. So this is how a kind of a, uh, then the UNBs, Directly, you know, governs the municipality directly governs the generators like us. Now, this is a regulatory framework. Again, if I am not doing what happens, is there is a judicial. We have NGT in Newtown, you must have seen in the HITCO National Green Tribunal, a big uh, thing. So, this is an NGT, and then we have RTIs, we have PIL, we have our own rights to really talk about why this kind of waste management not happening. So this is a kind of a regulatory governance which exists in India, which exists in all the states of the country. Generators, no need to tell, but you must be aware these are the people who are actually generating the waste. 
households. We know these kind of waste that we are generating every day from our house. There are wet waste, dry waste, there are domestic hazardous waste, which with COVID pandemic has become more. When we have a lot of home care treatment going on in our home, even we are using these kind of disposable masks for a potential infected persons. So domestic hazardous waste uh, also comes in picture. We have CND. CND is construction and demolition waste. If I have some kind of construction done in my house, there are a lot of uh, cement and all these things comes up. So these are also generated CND waste. Then we have sanitary waste or we talk about hygiene waste. This is a very common scenario in almost all the cities or the difficulty in managing these kind of things. Then we have optical generator institution. Now, when we say institution, commercial establishment, in this office buildings comes malls, shops, hotels, restaurants, markets comes. Your premise also comes under this because it's an institutional generation, you know. So you come under a bulk operator, an operator or a premise where more than 100 kg of waste is generated in a day. For a, you know, very layman person, I'll come into that trend. Uh, we calculate it as, you know, like 500 uh, to 1 kg of solid waste being generated by individual person in a day. So if you have 100 students staying here in a hostel, so almost minimum 100 kg of waste is being generated, even if it is not generated like that, but as a calculative way, it is being considered for the bulk waste. So that is how uh, the institutional and uh, these commercial establishment based generation comes. Then we have garden parks, municipal services, Sludge from the drain, when they descend it, street sweeping, that all entire plethora of the, you know, things come under the solid waste management landscape. So you understand it's not easy when we are talking about municipal corporation to manage waste. It is not only my waste that they have to manage, but they have to manage this entire scenario of the waste uh, generated in a city. Now, these are some of the waste which has got a very different characteristic, which I may not be talking much about in this presentation because each of them takes a separate session of one or two hours. So these are the waste which are not generally basically from our uh, household, like construction demolition waste, plastic waste definitely, but slaughtering waste, biomedical waste, liquid waste. These all waste have got a special recycling ability. That is why they have separate rules. You have plastic waste management rules again in 2016. We have CND waste management separate rule in 2016. Slaughtering is not considered as of now, but the rules are being formulated. Draft reports are there. Biomedical waste 2016 and liquid waste basically comes under Jal Shakti. You know, it's basically hygiene and all. So it doesn't come under the solid waste management category of the waste. So uh, these are some special category of waste. On the waste type, if you say this is, these are basically why I'm talking about different kind of waste is you should understand in your, uh, you know, while uh, we are going through the presentation that what happens to the recycle, why the recycling happens. Recycling will happen only based on the waste type. If I have biodegradable waste, I will have some technique to manage or use the biodegradability part. If it is a dry waste, I will not use that technique. I will use some other technique. So, depending on what kind of techniques we have to use for management, the waste are being, uh, you know, differentiated. Okay. This is the trend in major cities. You see the trend, like bigger cities and all, if you say, you know, uh, kind of Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, these cities, the waste generation trend is quite high. But if you see again, you know, smaller cities like Dhanbad, Gwalior, MP, or you see Agra in that, waste, the waste generation is, trend is low. You know why? Also because not only the population or the density, to tell you the density, population density is almost same like Kolkata and Agra. But when we talk about the lifestyle, the lifestyle of the people who are there inhabiting these cities are basically also the concern for tremendous amount of waste generation. A lot of things which are coming into the market, disposable part, the tendency to use more of the disposable or the single use thing, the waste generation is being 
uh, increasing in these cities. Other can be the waste generation that we talked about ki how much exactly I generate waste. So there has been a lot of studies, studies done by NILI, studies done by CPCB and all. But the latest one that we talked about, it's not 2016, but 2016, it should be a study. So uh, it has almost in West Bengal, 360 grams is considered to be generated. But I must tell you that it is very less, which is being, because it is an average part. If you go to a place like, uh, you know, um, what do you say, New Aliput, the waste generation will be too high. But same way, if you go to a place like not Chobish uh, Parvana, the waste generation per person is less. So you understand that it is also a very different way of lifestyle, uh, which leads to generation of waste. This is a very simple thing. In the entire waste which is generated from anywhere, municipal solid waste, almost 50 to 60 percent is the wet waste. So if I generate 100 kg, I'll say minimum calculation purpose, 60 kg is my biodegradable waste. Wet waste, food waste, horticulture waste, organic waste coming from gardens. That is 60 percent. And then we have, you know, uh, plastics of around 10 percent, 7 percent of paper and 32 percent is almost whatever is less, uh, I mean left. Okay, that's why. Now, uh, characterization of solid waste as a, you know, uh, organization which is in research field in science and all, we should also understand basically every waste cannot be a resource, but maximum amount of waste we can utilize. We can also understand by this that calorific value and moisture content of waste varies from city to city. Can you give me an example? Like we in West Bengal eat more of foods like uh, rice, which has got more moisture content. But if we go to uh, you know places like Shimla or you know Punjab, where they have more of roti, where the uh, moisture content of the food is less. So my technology which I am using in uh, West Bengal may not be applicable to the technology which is being which has to be used in Punjab. So there is a huge amount of technical background science behind waste management that requires to be done and not only copy paste from other organizations, other states or other countries. So in that way, you know, the content of high calorific value waste in Indian scenario is very less. Whatever food we have, entire all the you know cities of this country our calorific value is very less what does it mean it means that those technology which relies on this particular uh, property of calorific value that is not applicable to most of the cities in india especially the waste to energy we have a lot of articles talking about a lot of research which talks about how waste to energy could be implied but in a larger scale it's very difficult to sustain waste to energy plants because the calorific value of most of the waste in indian scenario is low now to see a simple waste management pathway how does it go so here we have the generator then if the primary collection happens the primary collection goes to a secondary storage from the secondary storage it goes to a transportation you know, to a landfill, to a whatever, uh, uh, you know, uh, dump yard we have. And then it goes to private agency for processing and distribution. Here, we'll find that in the primary collection is mostly done by ULBs or uh, urban local bodies. And in the secondary storage, waste storage, we have a lot of informal waste workers, which I will be talking about. A lot of rack pickers who are coming and you know, importantly, they are uh, working on uh, taking out the resources from the waste. So this is a general kind of uh, waste management pathway, which is a generalized waste management pathway. So this is the same thing which I'm talking about. When we have generators, the two kind of waste, it's all about, uh, you know, sort of SWM rules 2016, which talks about there are two kind of waste from the entire sources, biodegradable, non-biodegradable, Biodegradable part has to go either in composting or in biomethanation. The non-biodegradable part has to go for recycling or sanitary landfilling 
or waste to energy part for those waste which are high in calorific like plastics pet you know they the calorific value is very high so if you are segregating it that kind of waste can go to a uh, particular these uh, wpe waste to energy plants or crop processing plants okay so nothing too much talk about this because we all know i think probably you all have in your home also a lot of campaigns going on that wet waste have to be put in green dry waste have to be put in blue and we don't have in most of the municipalities the third waste but there is rule says there has to be one more bin which is basically the bin which could be black which could be red whatever the ulb says and that would be consisting of domestic hazardous waste it can also have paint bottles it can also have you know a uh, simple way of what we use blades you know the shaving blades or the cartridges that we are generally that should go into the third sanitary waste has to go into the third category so this is basically the solid waste management rule segregation and uh, okay i'll just come out uh, with this so these are some of the basic collection vehicles that is generally used in india so you must have seen in many places in many of the municipalities we do have these tippers you know hydraulic tip containers we also have hand carts we have electrical vehicles also in uh, many so these are the primary vehicles or equipments which are used for waste collection these are also used in many you know we have seen in ugri where exactly the kind of uh, food waste is more and they are taking it for composting plant they have these kind of which are very easy to use and uh, that doesn't require very technical driver or driving license at all to uh, have the collection equipments these are some of them the mini tra hydraulic trucks and all uh, to be utilized these are basically primary collection waste you know i'm talking about vehicles for primary collection that is from my home to the next point now comes to transfer stations now the moment my waste is being collected from the house to the next station as per the rules there should be a transfer station when when uh, the landfill site is more than 15 km from my house if it is 15 km more than my house it cannot be directly transported so there has to be a way that we have to have a transfer station so you know transfer stations are basically a very important uh, what do you say a uh, journey in waste management in many places in uh, our city also in not only in our city but in uh, other districts we do have small transfer stations which have been developed now just see the transfer station significance basically you know what happens is in the transfer station they reduces the amount of waste which has to be taken to land amar wadi diye ya amar premise diye if i am getting 100 kg of waste taken by the primary collection out of this 100 kg 50 kg will have resource so if i am directly taking it to landfill and dumping it my entire 100 kg is being wasted now during the transfer station there are people who are involved in recovery of waste so there are rag pickers there are informal workers who are taking out waste plastics and bottles you must have seen in many places compactor dekhane tha ke okhane you know we have seen many places so this is these are basically the transfer stations which are very important in waste management value chain because we understand that it creates a nuisance or you know it might be very smelly odor but it in a long run it is very useful for a city because the waste recovery is being done uh, with, with the transfer stations you see an example in coimbatore earlier it was like this you know the scenario was like this the waste used to be taken like this and entire huge amount of waste uh, in one lorry while going to 15 km or 18 km uh, almost 10 to 20% of waste used to go down in on the roads so they have really converted a kind of a place to a transfer station now this is very acceptable also to the common people who are living this beside because you know it's basically scientifically managed transfer stations and it helps in uh, resource recovery then comes our bio, uh, biodegradable waste i talked about that there are two ways of biodegradation uh, you know management composting and biomethanation composting is basically 
making the, uh, compost from the biodegradable waste and biomethanation is preparing biogas from the biodegradable waste. Now, this is a very, uh, you know, picture of Uttarpada. If anybody has visited Uttarpada, they should go and see the composting plant that we have of our, uh, you know, uh, municipal corporation there. So they have a proper collection and they are composting in the winter of compost. Huge amounts of compost are being produced by this industry. Ways to compost system. There are also some of the composting. These are some of the techniques being used. You know, uh, where we have the wind row composting. We have rotary drum composter, which are being used in city here also and in other cities also for making or harnessing the compost from biodegradable waste. Biomethanation, if you have not seen, we see these pictures. These are basically biogas dome kind of thing, which produces biogas from the organic waste. So it's organic waste does not require to be only from your, you know, bathroom and uh, excreta. It is from the food waste that we are generating, the fields that we are generating. So such kind of biomethanation compost plants, we have seen these kind of plants mostly in the, uh, you know, temples where a lot amount of flower waste comes, prashad comes. So in this way, you know, they are converting it into biogas and this biogas could be used for the uh, kitchen of the temple or the kitchen of a hostel uh, for fuel purpose. So it's a kind of a good project for alternate or renewable energy. For which we do get a uh, kind of uh, subsidy also. <coughs> this is an example. I don't know how many, uh, I mean, How many would have gone and seen Alapura? Alapura is in Kerala. Now, this place is very unique. You know, when you see the SBM case studies, this uh, particular municipality has got uh, almost 80% of uh, residents uh, doing composting in their home. An entire property tax has been waived off for two years for them. This is basically because the municipality does not have to have a land for composting. So, Alapura is a role model for uh, solid waste management case studies. This was a campaign which they had clean home, clean city. So, we keep our home clean. So, this kind of segregating resources, transfer stations were also being built up. Apart from the policy, as I said, you know, the households were said, talk that they do composting in their premise and their for the two years, their property tax was waived. So most of the residents, you know, they bought, they, they did compost in the premise, they did compost in the pot. You can do composting in any way. You know, I mean, it's a very simple process. So government subsidies have been made. Now, often wet, wet waste, let us come to the dry waste collection system. You are aware of MRF. It's a very important, you know, terms which are being used in these waste management sites which we call as MRF is Material Recovery Facilities. Material Recovery Facilities means, as I said, almost, you know, uh, 30 to 40 percent are also dry waste, which are not food waste. So, this dry waste, what happens is, it is being collected by the, in a formal waste value chain, it is connected by municipal collection, uh, you know, uh, system. There are dry waste collection centers, and from that, whatever is not recyclable, inert that we call them inert so that are sent to land now in the informal value chain informal waste pickers are collecting dry waste from our home we are selling off sometimes plastic paper and all we call kabadi wala then we sell off so this is the informal value chain where waste pickers are picking that <laughs> similarly they are giving it to aggregators that is kabadi walas and then they are giving it to recyclers and this is the entire chain which moves. But informal waste picker is a huge manpower in our waste value chain. They are helping us here, collecting. They are helping us here in the transfer station. They are also collecting the recyclable thing. Here they are also scavenging on the landfill. If you see, go to see Dhapa sometimes, I mean, if you are able to stand there, but there are n number of uh, Rack pickers who are really taking out waste from these particular landfills. It is wrong, it is bad, we understand, 
but that is what is their livelihood like they go to office to earn that is their livelihood so they are waste based uh, kind of a scavenger that we can talk about and now you know in linkedin and all in social media you have this particular uh, post going on that haliswa uh, landfill fire you know many of you must have seen that what is the situation in haliswa in delhi landfill that is only because entire amount of high calorific dry waste are directly going to right most of the compost or methane generating things are directly going to landfill which is generating huge amount of natural methane and natural fire is happening so that is what is uh, this dry waste value uh, chain mrf has got a very important role a material recovery facility in rules this rule has specifically talked about establishment of mrf they have said that most of the municipalities should not take all the waste to dry waste to landfill they have to reduce it and establish this kind of mr mr now what is basically a mr is a very simple way of operating mr what all does it have it's a small unit it can be picked up in you know 500 uh, square feet kind of land and sorry it is got you know kind of a bay bridge to see what kind of waste coming they got a conveyor belt which helps to segregate the different plastics or different paper or different dry waste here then we have a kind of what we call as patka machine which is basically a kind of a shredder to make it lesser then we have a baling machine that is a compactor we compact and reduce the volume of the waste and we have again one more shredding machine they it and these granules or you know kind of things they are sold out it is a huge potential for economic development many startups have started up these you know you named lot of startups like uh, even huladec uh, is doing it here we have puma we are doing it they are doing it here across the country in bangalore lot of young entrepreneurs have come up to start up these kind of mrfs and one of the best part of mrf is also uh, it increases the efficiency of waste recovery link recycler producers and generators for example you again see ambikapur i think you must have heard about ambikapur many times indore model ambikapur model talk about ambikapur it's a small city how did they attain 100% waste management so that is only because you know these kind of first of all these informal rack pickers or women sgs were utilized right from the beginning Uh, for collection this is a transfer station this is a mrf material recovery facility in ambikapur where these women are basically manually they don't have conveyor belt in some of the places they have done but most of them are segregating the different kind of plastics and dry waste and then ultimately they sell it you know i mean you can see these kind of uh, um, there is one more picture probably of this outcome you could see the waste is you know 156 category of the dry waste they separate it's not easy i have uh, you know almost 100 kg of waste they are they are able to separate this waste into 156 category like for example if i see this bottle it is one waste according to me but this is a different plastic hdp we have this this is pet tetrathalate you have this this is basically again a very low density uh, polyethylene the cover that i talking about so with it you know we have this particular rim which is also a different kind of plastic so from one plastic almost four one bottle almost four or five categories comes up so they are converting it i mean uh, separating it into almost 123 inorganic uh, kind of uh, category why this because the recycling value increases if i'm giving or selling it a combined bottle it will yield me less they will give me less but if i change it because you know their uh, manual or uh, kind of a work for separating this will decrease so uh, almost 80 lakhs worth of treated waste is being sold every year it's a huge good economic model helping so many women to really involve with this kind of change this is the ambika mode model 
Integrating informal sector is very important in this. What I'm talking about is, you know, uh, how exactly informal sector should be involved. You can take an example of Pune. Pune, we have a swatch model. Swatch model, what they are doing is there's a cooperative model where women are basically like Amul. You know, we have Amul uh, dairy milk that as a kind of an Amul cooperative. Same with Swatch Pune, the women are involved in day to day collection. Almost, you know, single woman is involved in 200 uh, household based collection. And they are doing it in the same way of these kind of resource recyclables, non recyclables. They are changing it and selling it off to the retail. So this is a very sustainable model of swatch and recover user fee. There is a user fee which also being taken by the, like from my house, they will take 30 rupees per month to take the waste. So 30 rupees per month, you segregate and take the waste. Mostly if you're not segregated, they will segregate at their own station. So uh, recover uh, you know, user fee model, uh, this kind of waste management model is there. So swatch, as I said, you know, it is the swatch model of Pune. Now, uh, not going much into the particularly uh, technology part, there is one very important technology that you, uh, you know, a lot of times it is there in the debate on waste to energy technology of WPE. Whether it is useful, whether it will work or not, I really, uh, you know, um, give that thing to you uh, to decide. Basically, at least know that our calorific value of the waste is not so much. Investing in waste to, techno uh, waste to energy technology sometimes doesn't pay. Because there are case studies across the city, across the country, where these models didn't work at all. Now, uh, other good things of uh, waste to energy technology is life cycle cost is less. We have minimum land area. We just have a cylinder which I can just put it here put all the waste in that and then it will be converted into crew gas or whatever we want. Now, these are some of the technology that we use for the waste to, uh, energy technology. Incineration, pyrolysis, RDF that we call is, you know, refuse derived fuels and plasma. So this, you know, could be, you could uh, really research it or, you know, more it, to know more about it. But uh, it's also very important some of the vendors come and tell us, you give us all the waste, I will convert it into energy, which is a wrong, which is absolutely wrong notion. No vendor can convert all kind of uh, waste into energy. So segregation is again very important for waste to energy. It's not like I give out everything, you know, I'm happy, I will not segregate it all. But segregation is very important for any waste to energy plan to be successful. I've given some of the cases, you'll see Delhi, there are two waste to energy plants in Delhi. In Bangalore, one plant is being operational, you know, it is still under concentration, uh, construction. Pune, the plant is yet not operational, but in Hyderabad, we have a plant, but from that plant, it got shut. Because, because from the waste to energy plant, what happened was there was energy electricity being generated. That electricity was going to be put into the grid, but Municipal corporation or the electricity people did provide them tipping fee and all these kind of logistics. It is not yet functioning. So, last what I would talk about is after all the technologies, after all the pre-processing of the waste, what happens to the waste in Thapa? Or something like what we call about uh, this kind of dump. So everything when goes out into the dump. We have a lot of these kind of problems, surface water contamination, leachate and all. And this is basically a scientific landfill that has to be done in all the cities. And as I said, out of the 100 kg waste that I am generating to the sanitary landfill, only 10 kg of waste should go. Rest 90 kg of waste has to be processed like MRF, composting and all these. But most of the places what's happening is all entire 100 kg waste is going there. So that is where exactly the intervention of Swachh Bharat Mission has to come in. Uh, interventions of waste management science has to come in. So this is sanitary landfill. Sanitary landfill is not a dump. It is a properly engineered site with geotextile layer 
it has got a you know methane uh, what do you call methane uh, capturing flares you know the flares being captured methane gas capturing techniques are there you see these are basically geosynthetic clay liners that we do in a sanitary landfill hdp geo membranes are being used so that leaching doesn't happen of the entire base similarly this is the kind of how do they use uh, the laying of their uh, textile we have the leachate collections there are these kind of pipes which goes in sanitary landfills engineered landfills where uh, leachate is being collected and it is being but whatever the leachate comes it goes to a waste treatment plant so effluent treatment plant or sdp then we have gas the methane gases which comes up like in halaswa and all we don't have good methane capturing technique that is the reason the flares and the uh, common uh, thing of uh, fire comes up. using ict is very important i think uh, sir said also tomorrow is national technology day so you people as being in a basic science also understands that the ro role of technology or uh, you know uh, ict in waste management has come up starting from these kind of rfid tags you know you in vijayawada they have put in all these uh, bins which are there in this kind of rfid tags so moment the uh, waste comes how much waste is being poured how much waste is being emptied and all all this kind of now automatically coming so monitoring and evaluation becomes easier similarly we have digital house identification most of the time what happens is the collection person who is going doesn't know that cannot locate the house so that kind of digital identification of the houses are being done for waste management in wapi and uh, i think uh, solid waste management probably that is what exactly we are talking about i have just two slides to talk about because i think uh, requested about the liquid waste management so just to understand a basic knowledge about liquid waste management is you should know what is sewage what is sludge what is storm water sewage is something which is coming from our bathrooms which consists of excreta urine and all that is sewage sludge is something which comes from my kitchen which doesn't have excreta that is sludge and we have storm water storm water is what like tomorrow there is a huge amount of rain the entire surface water extra surface water which comes up is storm water so a city has to have waste management of all these three storm water sludge and sewage and for this we have different kind of sewage treatment plant i don't know how many i mean have you ever seen any sewage treatment plant or stp we have one of the stp uh, which is there in bhatpara i'm talking about this this is a newly constructed stp in kolkata municipal corporation we have five stps sewage treatment plant and mostly all these stps the basic science behind is is this whatever the organic waste is there in the sewage that has to be made stabilized made into sewage acceptable standard like all this drip chamber sludge filtration and all it goes through these kind of chambers activated sludge aeration ultimately whatever goes out from a sewage treatment plant should have the standard which is there in pollution control board less than this much cod this much less than vod that has to apply so that is what exactly is uh, talk about uh, i think these are very simple you can see the slide there are a lot of indirect cost of waste management we are talking about we pay this for i'm paying 30 rupees per month is for this services these are direct cost of waste management but there are indirect cost of waste the impact that it has on environment impact that it had on health for improper waste management which is absolutely we all know we don't have to talk about it there are a lot of environmental impact on waste management and i think i'll leave you with a question that in spite of so much of know how that we have so many articles that we do so uh, or see you know why still we are not able to change the waste management or clean it so this is something some question that we have to find answers on about whether we are responsible whether municipal corporation is responsible who is responsible and i think what we can do i think that's all i i was here to share my views and i hope you know uh, tomorrow if you are really talking seeing something on mrf or something like that read something about it you are aware that what we are talking about thank you so much 
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for making you a uh, very motivating lecture. Now it's time for question answers. So, any question, please? Hello, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Uh, a very nice talk. But ma'am, I have some uh, question. I uh, I don't know much like of you. I mean, I'm not expert in this field, but uh, just a, a student in basic science, I have some query. Ma'am, uh, I have some data that uh, uh, it's like Dr. Uh, uh, Sharad Kale, uh, who is in scientific TI effort. Uh, he installed a uh, plant in TISS. Uh, it uh, it's also institute in India, so which needs uh, around like uh, I mean uh, he uh, installed that plant uh, uh, adjacent to a, uh, a, a community canteen in that institute, and uh, it is like uh, the community canteen uh, generates uh, like uh, 500 kgs or 200 kgs of waste uh, per day, and uh, uh, in in this. Uh, uh, plant, we, we can, uh, I mean, uh, we only need 40 square meters of land and uh, 25 lakh of initial investment right. according to his uh, study. And anyone can use it, no royalty is there, and uh, only like 25,000 of uh, patent value he has filed. So, uh, ma'am, this is uh, just one solution. I mean, we can also install this, uh, I mean, adjacent to our community can, uh, can Absolutely. I think rather in the morning we had talk also with your. Uh, on the same, these are lot of doable activities. That's what I'm saying. The opportunities are huge. He must have installed it in this, but I know a lot of places where exactly it is being installed. As I said, in temples, it is being installed, and uh, you know, uh, roughly it's like hundred kg of waste is that kind of things comes out around uh, twelve lakhs. You know, I'm in mean, a rough calculation. I'm talking about a biocompost, uh, biomethanation plant. That is a biomethanation plant that is. He has installed yes. and this biomethanation plant almost a rough budget is you know for 100 kg of base per day I mean, which we generally have to feed every day it costs almost around 12 lakhs and uh, it's just a kind of a cylinder a dome it's very much uh, usable very much could be done not only in fear not only in your kitchen but it could also light up some of your you know hostel areas if you don't want to use it in that Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm just uh, adding this uh, that uh, scientist Dr. Kale has said that uh, we just need uh, uh, 400 square meter of place yes. and uh, initial investment of uh, I think uh, tw uh, 25 lakh. And yes. after three to four years, it yes. is uh, totally free. It becomes free. Absolutely, return on investment will be less. You know, I mean, will be quite good yes. in these yes. kind of places because you are saving on fuel. Yes. You know, because return on investment that we call. Uh, Calculate is how much we have spent and yes. how much we are saving. We are saving on fuel. We will be saving on also. You get a subsidy on these kind of things by government. Okay. Because these are alternative sources of energy. We are going to renewable energy. So the Ministry of MNRE, Ministry of uh, you know uh, New and Renewable Energy Ministry, that gives subsidy for these kind of plants to be installed also in the uh, solar or these uh, biomethane. Okay, ma'am. Uh, one thing uh, also like uh, which you have told that uh, I on to also like that in Warangal, the people just change the whole appearance of the city in uh, seven days. Doctor, uh, I think IS officer Vivek Yadav yes. did this. Uh, he was a, I mean, he launched some clean city championship. Absolutely. The students uh, uh, took part in that uh, champion, that thing. Absolutely. You know, you are right in that. In Warangal, I, I just showed few of the case studies, but in Warangal itself, in the, the model city that we are talking about in the Swachka Sarvekshan, so, you know, it is coming first from last so many years. That is only because of the leadership being done, shown by the uh, district commissioner that time. Unless he has taken that lead to make the city, you know, in the way that has been done, it is not only one person work, but also the leadership of uh, city matters most. Varangal is one of the case. We have got Surat is one of the case and uh, Indore. These three have been uh, absolutely surat of the plague has become the you know most dirty. I mean now it is the one of the most clean city, and the effort has been taken up uh, by uh, the deputy commissioner of the city. Yeah, actually, uh, yes. Actually, but we have a garbage collection area in the center. Yeah. So where we got a request for opening a digger pit to before 
Thieves, Pidhanagar Municipal yeah. Corporation people come and they will collect the best. Uh, so it will not look in the eyes and also whether it is good for the uh, like hygiene and everything. Yes, you know, but you know, when you have the digging of the pit and if you're putting all the waste in that, that may not be uh, allowed. Reason is unless it is layered. If you have a layered thing, and because you know, in time, pollution control board might come, or Minan Municipal Corporation might come. It has a possibility of leaching. They have to avoid the leaching uh, concept in all the waste. But unless you know, you can also have some kind of very temporary storage area being developed. But definitely, it will be showing because you know, if you have underground, if you want to make it underground, you have to line it. If you are lining it and you have uh, surety that there is no leachage, then there is no. Leachage. But I think when you you know put it. Taking it out, taking it out would be very difficult. And other, other than that, it could be also kind of a bigger, you know, uh, those old uh, barrels that we have seen in many places. You know, we get it in a very half prices from Bada Bazaar and all, you know, these chemical barrels that we have and uh, that are cut and all. And uh, those barrels uh, could be used, especially, you know, for temporary storage that will look good also to the eyes and it will not. Um, ma'am, one thing, this last thing, yes. ma'am, uh, I mean, uh, we all have that uh, that kind of a, a lot of solutions we have, but we are not doing that. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, in presence of you uh, on this uh, occasion, I just uh, want to request uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Pandey said that uh, please do uh, this thing, I mean, uh, for our institute, because just, I mean, uh, uh, taking the uh, garbage and uh, giving it to the municipality, it doesn't work. Uh, doesn't work that way. Because, uh, I mean, we have to do this thing, and and the solutions are in front of us, so we can do that. And in this occasion, I take the place that I'll be the first person to uh, take the initiative in, in this. Very good, and I think. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay, thank you, sir. I have also written this in. I mean, we have a essay competition. Okay, that's good. You know, as a student, I also you know our responsibility is your responsibility is to segregate the waste. It will only help. Uh, Mithilesh or somebody else who is managing in the second wave that if we have a compost plan again to tell you students have to take part by segregating the waste. If I have a biomethanation plan, I have to make sure that in my hostel and all these uh, dining places, the two bins which are being kept, we are doing it properly. Only then it will be successful in that uh, level. Any questions? So, so then there, you know, I mean, anytime, any kind of uh, questions anybody have or something, my email ID is very much available. They can always contact me. Okay. So now I'm requesting again to Mr. Mithilesh K. Fandi to give a vote of thanks. So patiently to the topic as detailed by Ms. Prima Banerjee. Hope all of you will do the needful from your end and spread the adequate sanitization regarding e waste. Thank you.